Hello, my dear students. Welcome to the next class of Appreciating Proofs. So, in the last class, we were discussing about Marcel Junot's the first atomic atom bomb, and Marcel Junot, along with the inquiry of commission, was visiting Hiroshima, and the Japanese interpreters were giving accounts of Hiroshima before the atomic bomb destruction that the city was about almost 4 lakh people with infrastructures and on the day of disaster on 6th of August in a clear sky suddenly a whitish pinkish light appeared in the sky accompanied by unnatural tremor followed almost by a wave of suffocating heat they could see everything burning within few seconds thousands of the people burned in the flames and these they could get the account from the verbal reports verbal reports that passed in japan from one end to another and the japanese interpreters were giving their accounts on the reality that happened on the reality of 6th of August and we have discussed everything was burned in flames trams rails trains were flung off all the living organisms suffered the same fate of human beings every living living thing was frightened Undescri indescribable suffering of the people vegetation did not escape everything went up in flames and let's continue from beyond the zone of utter death let's continue beyond the zone of utter death in which nothing remained alive houses collapsed in a hurl of beams bricks and girders the whole city houses all got collapsed up to about three miles from the center of the explosion lightly built houses were flattened as though they had been built of cardboard houses were flattened from the center of explosion to four to five kilometers the whole area was destructed houses were flattened as though it is built by light materials those who were inside were either killed or wounded. Everybody got affected. Those who managed to extricate themselves by some miracle found themselves surrounded by a ring of fire. Rakshapata Alkar Chuttum Kandada completed the Matramana Kandada. And the few who succeeded in making their way to safety generally died 20 or 30 days later from the delayed effects of the deadly gamma rays. Rekshapattu and the Tovanda Alkaru Kudi Uri Masa the Nullila Marikiana and Daida Atre Mairano radio waves and the gamma rays and the effect on the Varayanada. Some of the reinforced concrete or stone buildings remained standing but their interiors were completely gutted by the blast. Some buildings remained there but it cannot be used became useless the whole interiors were burned interiors became useless in the blast about half an hour after the explosion while the sky all around Hiroshima was still cloudless it was a cloudless morning in Hiroshima after the explosion sky was still cloudless but a fine rain began to fall on the town and went on for about five minutes a rain began to fall it was caused by the sudden rays of overheated air to a great height in the explosion hair got air got heated and it raised to a great height it rose to a great height where it condensed air got condensed and it fell back as rain it will not be a normal rain definitely there would be the debris of these things debris of um, materials which were burned probably it would be a black black rain 
Then a violent wind rose and the fires extended with terrible rapidity. In this destruction, the rain caused fires to extend in very speed because most of the Japanese houses were built only of timber and straw. Destruction again and again. By the evening, the fire began to die down and then it went out. Fire went out in the evening. There was nothing left to burn. The city had ceased to exist. Nothing left to burn. Ella kapte nashitche chambalai. Veedugal, buildings, alkar, marangal, living, baaki. Ella jeeva jalangalum kapte nashitche. Our place ila aga avashishtangal matra maana andai arnadu. Our ella tindde remains matra maana andai arnadu. The Japanese person who was a Japanese journalist who was describing this group off and then pronounced one word with indescribable but restrained emotion. Look, they were in the site. About two and a half miles from the center of the town, about four kilometers from the center of the town, all the buildings had been burnt out. All buildings had been burnt out and destroyed. Only traces of the foundations were left only bays were left and piles of debris and rusty charred iron work were left ella thinde mavishishtangalum karinju poyittulla iron works maatramana avadu undayirunnathu at three quarters of a mile from the center of the explosion nothing at all was left everything had disappeared it was a stony waste littered with debris and twisted girders the place was full of remains of the houses place was full of twisted girders place was messed up with the remains of houses buildings we got out of the car and made our way slowly through the ruins into the center of the dead city they got out of the car and they began to walk absolute silence reigned in the whole city nothing left there was not even a survivor searching in the ruins though some distance away a group of soldiers can be seen soldiers was clearing a passage through the debris they were making a way there was not a bird or an animal to be seen anywhere no living organisms professor zuzuki led the way and spoke in a loud voice so that we could all hear what he said professor to speaking his sentences came to us disjointed as though by deep excitement and emotion he was also in emotion we must open our minds we must try to understand everything he pointed to the remnants of a wall the base of which ran for perhaps 6 or 7 yards they could see a base there they could see a remnants remains of a wall there was a hospital here gentlemen 200 beds a doctors 20 nurses there was a hospital but now what remains is just a wall remnants of a wall every single one and all the patients were killed that's what an atomic bomb does it kills everything it kills everything around you the city came to an end a few days before i left tokyo so that's it about the description of the place a few days before i left tokyo brigadier general baker one of the american officers in charge of foreign relations informed me that General McHather wished to receive the delegation of the International Red Cross. McHather wants to meet a person from Red Cross and he went. General McHather received us in his office on the top floor of the building. He was wearing the ordinary service uniform of the US Army and the only indication of his high rank were five stars in each shoulder strap. He was in the ordinary service uniform of the US Army. he invited us all to sit down near the window which gave on to the grounds of the imperial palace 
and sitting down with us the person respective of his rank he sat down with the people and smoked his traditional pipe he talked to us freely the general he was general of the army talked to them he thanked us for the work we had done on behalf of the imprisoned americans icrc persons like junood masul junood were working uh, were visiting prisoners of war and they were closely monitoring whether they are treated like uh, as per uh, the rules of geneva conventions but we could feel that his thoughts went even further than the fate of his own when he was thinking beyond my uh, general us army general was thinking beyond that he was thinking of everyone who had been assisted and protected by the red cross of all those in their exile and their humiliation had no other hope of existence and he was thinking of everyone who had been protected by the red cross everybody he was thinking of everybody he was thinking of the uh, survivors in the hospitals he was thinking of the people protected by the red cross probably the persons people in the hospitals of all those in their exile and their humiliation had no other hope of assistance only red cross was uh, only red cross can do something for them because anyway us cannot do anything di- any anything directly to the people's uh, relief red cross could do something for them other than red cross there were no hope of assistance at that time the supreme value of human life and human blood has been forgotten he said and human dignity too in the war people forget everything the value of human life has been forgotten how important a human life that has been forgotten in a firm voice emphasizing each word he went on force is not a solution for man's problems war is not a solution force on its own is nothing it never has the last word it is not the last word war atomic bombs it is not the last word perhaps you find it strange that i a professional soldier should say that to you and he continues to say or soldier ay nan idu parayunathu ningalku adishyamayittu thonunnundava but he is also touched shaken by the war's destruction of hiroshima അവർക്കൊക്കെ ആ സമയത്ത് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് വേർബൽ റിപ്പോർട്ട്സ് മാത്രമാണ് ഉണ്ടായിരുന്നത് അത് കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് മാസു ജുനോദും കമ്മീഷൻ ഓഫ് എൻക്വയറിയും ഹിറോഷിമയിൽ വന്ന് അവിടുത്തെ അവസ്ഥകൾ കണ്ടിട്ടാണ് ജനറലിനോട് അവിടുത്തെ കാര്യങ്ങളെല്ലാം കറക്റ്റായിട്ട് ഇൻഫോം ചെയ്തത് ആൻഡ് വാസ് റിയലി ഷോക്ക്ഡ് ദ ചീഫ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് ഓഫ് വിക്ടറി ഇൻ ദ പെസഫിക് ചീഫ് ആർക്കിടെക്ട് ഓഫ് വിക്ടറി ഇൻ ദ വാസ് ഇൻ ദ പെസഫിക് did not conceal his opinion that peace still lay far ahead in the future peace is far ahead in the future now the time is under the threat of wars people lost their lives idil ninnokke kare keri varanayittum elupam alla and peace means it is something far away in the future even with our present weapons not including those still to be developed a new war would leave nothing behind worthy of mention yuddhangal eppolum nammale oru 20 30 varshathekku pinilottaanu kondu povunathu kaaranam ella infrastructure nashichu povum pinne nammale onnil ninnu thodanganam engane aayalum yuddhangal ennu parayun yuddham ennu parayunathu nammale kore nootandugal alle kore varshangal pinilottu mathre naikkullu and in even more precise terms he sketched the danger of death and destruction which still hung over the world in more precise terms he was speaking about the death and destruction which still hung over the world ella rajyangalkum of annatha oru 1945 la oru situation alla nammal indatha sahajaryangal nokkumbo innu oru vidham ella rajyangalude kaiyilum atomic bombs thanne undu alle logo muthuvan nashippikan പാകത്തിനുള്ള ബോംബ്സ് വരെ പല രാജ്യങ്ങളുടെ കയ്യിലുണ്ട് വി ആർ അണ്ടർ ദ ത്രെറ്റ് വി ആർ അണ്ടർ ദ ത്രെറ്റ് ഓഫ് ആറ്റമിക് ബോംബ് ഡിസാസ്റ്റേഴ്സ് നൗ ഓൾസോ ടു മച്ച് ഹാസ് ബിൻ ഡിസ്ട്രോയിഡ് ഇൻ ദിസ് വോൾ എവറി തിങ് ഗോട്ട് ഡിസ്ട്രോയിഡ് ആൻഡ് ദ ഫിസിക്കൽ എക്സോഷൻ ഇസ് ടു ഗ്രേറ്റ് ഫോർ ദർ ടു ബി അനാദർ വോർ ഡ്യൂറിംഗ് ദ നെക്സ്റ്റ് ട്വൻറ്റി ഓർ ട്വൻറ്റി ഫൈവ് ഇയേഴ്സ് ബട്ട് വാട്ട് വിൽ ഹാപ്പൻ ആഫ്റ്റർ ദാറ്റ് വോർ യുദ്ധങ്ങൾ കഴിഞ്ഞിട്ട് എന്താണ് നമുക്ക് കാണാൻ പറ്റുന്നത
വേൾഡ് വിൽ നോട്ട് ബി ദർ ദ പ്ലേസ് എൻ ടു കം ടു എൻ എൻഡ് ആ ഒരു സ്ഥലം മുഴുവനാണ് അവസാനിക്കുന്നത് അവിടുത്തെ ആൾക്കാർ സാധനങ്ങൾ സ്ഥല അവിടുത്തെ ബിൽഡിങ്സ് മൊത്തത്തിലാണ് നാം അവശേഷമായി പോകുന്നത് വാട്ട് വിൽ ഹാപ്പൻ അൺലസ് ബിറ്റ്വീൻ നവ് ഇൻ ദെൻ വി ഡു എവറിത്തിങ് പോസിബിൾ ടു സേവ് മാൻ കൈൻഡ് ഫ്രം ഇറ്റ് സെൽഫ് ദ ബോംബ് ലിറ്റിൽ ബോയ് ഇറ്റ് വെയ്ഡ് നയൻ തൗസൻഡ് സെവൻ ഹൺഡ്രഡ് പൗണ്ട്സ് ദാറ്റ് മീൻസ് ഫോർ തൗസൻഡ് നിയർലി kilograms and the bomb was dropped on hiroshima and it dropped from 31000 feet but it exploded about 1500 feet above the city of hiroshima that is why a light huge light intense hot light was seen by the people blinding light was seen by the people The bomb dropped on Nagasaki which which was nicknamed as Fat Man was weighed 10800 pounds it was on 9th of August that means nearly 4700 kg after the bomb blast the black rain that contained large amounts of radioactive fallout and it caused widespread contamination casualties were greatly casualty is very greatly it is estimated that the first 4 months it is nearly 2 lakhs people died the bomb was exploded in the sky a sudden blinding light appeared in the sky suffocating heat after that blast waves sweeping away everything in its path when junood and his team visited the ruined station in hiroshima he says that the hands of the clock had stopped at this historic moment 8:15 junood explains in his warrior without weapons in his book he says a doctor comes in from outside to visit the sick every day in the hospital the medical care is rudimentary dressings are made of coarse cloth a, a few jars of medicine are lying around on a shelf the injured often have uncovered wounds and thousands of flies settle on them and buzz around everything is incredibly filthy several patients are suffering from the delayed effects of radioactivity with multiple hemorrhages they need small blood trans blood transfusions at regular intervals but there are no donors no doctors to determine the compatibility of the blood groups there is no treatment there was no medical supplies all the laboratory equipment that had been put out of action in red cross hospital part of the roof had caved in and the hospital was open to the wind and the rain one of the japanese doctors told me that a thousand patients had been taken in on the day of the disaster thousand patients in that hospital 600 had died almost immediately and had been buried elsewhere in the immediate vicinity of the hospital at present only 200 remained there were no blood transfusions because there was no equipment to carry out examinations donors had either died or disappeared but now it is said that now the radioactive status uh, it has been comparatively less in hiroshima and nagasaki and it is not harmful to the human beings so it was uh, we have discussed at 3 miles from the bombs epicenter the houses had been flattened like cardboard nearly to 5 kilometers from the bombs epicenter the houses were flattened everything got destroyed all that remained was the outline of their foundations and heaps of rusty metal it seemed that everything had been torn apart or blasted and swept away as if by a supernatural power the emergency hospital was a half demolished school many holes in the roof and on that day it was pouring with rain and water was dripping into the patients rooms black rain 
those who had the strength to move huddled in sheltered corners while the others lay on some kind of pallets these were the dying there are 84 second injured in this hospital with 10 nurses and 20 school girls who seemed to be very little girls aged from 12 to 15 years who were assisting them to look after them there is no water no sanitary installations no kitchen when they were in the car the first signs of the effects of the bomb were visible 4 miles or so from the bomb's dropping point marcel jrod says 4 miles that is nearly 6 and a half kilometers the roofs looked denuded as their tiles had been blown off by the blast in places the grass was bleached as if dried japanese journalist explained that the plants vegetables and rice up to 5 or 6 miles from the bombs epicenter had lost their green color to almost 8 kilometers we can say 8 or 9 kilometers from the bombs epicenter the green color plants lost their color immediately after the explosion because of that intense hot they only got their color back 3 or 4 weeks later but some plants had died all living organisms died the primary target of the bomb on 9th august the fat man was actually they planned for kokura but there were thick layer of clouds so they dropped in nagasaki the effects of radiation exposure also increased the cancer rates in the survivors hiroshima actually looked worse than nagasaki the damage in hiroshima was complete cannot say complete but whole city was destroyed but uh, at nagasaki there were no buildings just underneath the center of explosion but in both the places the damage was greater hiroshima a manufacturing center of some 3 lakh 50000 people located about 500 miles from tokyo was selected as the first target the 9000 pound uranium 235 blow bomb aboard a modified b29 plane was dropped by parachute at 8:15 in the morning and it exploded 2000 feet above hiroshima when japan refused to surrender another bomb deadly bomb fat man was dropped paving for japan's immediate surrender a descendant of a ginkgo biloba tree that survived atomic bombing of hiroshima in 1945 was planted at a ceremony at the icrc's headquarters in geneva in 2013 standing as a living testimony to the horrendous consequences of nuclear weapons and as a hope the tree as a hope also for eliminating them from the face of earth he ends his journal with the reflections of a scientific and medical nature and with an appeal for the bomb to be banned outright he was saying that another atomic bomb destruction must not occur in your kel kodi atomic bomb will log the use the area the whole world comes to an end either the world can continue to live continue to exist or it comes to an end and this ginkgo biloba tree which survived in the atomic bomb it lives as a living testimony to the horrendous consequences of nuclear weapons and also it has a hope for eliminating these nuclear weapons from the face of the earth ginkgo biloba tree so children that's it about the first atom bomb we will continue with appreciating pros with another chapter come september in our next class